The views and opinions expressed in this podcast by the host or the guest do not necessarily reflect the views of Paranormal Buzz Radio or its sponsors. Use of any material produced by Paranormal Buzz Radio without express written consent is strictly prohibited. For information on everything Paranormal Buzz Radio has to offer, visit our website, ParanormalBuzzRadio.com. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome to Exploring the Unknown with Rebecca and Shay. Taking stories from today's news, Rebecca and Shay will explore everything from the paranormal, supernatural, the strange and unusual, unsolved mysteries, and more. Join them as they delve deep into the unknown and mysterious. Taken from news headlines, water cooler chat with a paranormal twist. Only on Paranormal Buzz Radio. Hey, Rebecca. How you doing? Good. How are you, Shay? I am awesome. I am so enjoying my vacation. Um, nothing against hosts or anything, but um, I have like two weeks of like maybe two shows and some recordings and stuff. So to me, that's a, that's a vacation. I'm so excited. Yay. And I am home today in a snowstorm which is the best feeling ever to know that you don't have to go out in a snowstorm. Yeah. That was me, what, a week and a half ago, two weeks ago? Uh, yeah. We were getting – we were supposed to be on the edge and get kind of like a little bit of rain, but it started like two hours ago, and I think we have a couple, three inches. It's crazy right this second. And, yeah, I am glad to be home and not have to go to work. So. I wouldn't feel bad for you, except for the fact that we got like four feet in under 24 hours. Well, typically I yeah. would either be at work or have to work like, you know, I would have to work in this. So I'm yeah. really excited today. <laughs> yeah. So we're both in good spirits. Yes. Yes, for sure. Not working in snow is great. <laughs> I'm always happy when I talk to you and I see your beautiful face and you smile at me just like that. They can't see <laughs> it, but I can. So. Yeah, well, you know, we always have fun. I'm excited about today's article, too. I am, too. We haven't done a, a topic like this since, I, I, I think, the um, episode one. The very first it's been episode. a while. There was another one where we did a mixture, but it had a lot of supernatural stuff in it. So I'm very happy. Yeah. This article is one that is local to me um, and was kind of like I read it and then said, wow, what? <laughs> she won't say it. She meant what the fuck. I'll say it. <laughs> Yeah, there, there's a lot of that in this. So. Oh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> so, anyway, let me pull this one up. This is from KHQA, which, again, is my local TV station. Um, it was published on Tuesday, December 22nd of 2020. Um, it's called Missouri Couple Accused of Torturing, Beating Family, Four-Year-Old Dies. Isn't it kind of sad we're excited to do a story like this? Uh, this is this is a really sad and really bizarre it is. story. That's why I'm pointing pointing it out. We don't mean it like we're excited it happened. It's just a different type of story for us, and it's so disgusting that we have to talk about it. The, wait, wait till we get into it, and you'll understand why we're just so yes. perplexed by it. But um. Anyway, this is from Warsaw, Missouri. A Benton County couple is in custody for allegedly torturing a family for days, eventually beating and drowning a four-year-old girl to death over the weekend. According to court documents, 35-year-old Ethan Mast and 21-year-old Courtney Amon had been regularly beating a neighboring family for two weeks prior to the four-year-old victim being beaten and forced into a pond, resulting in her death. Documents say her body was severely bruised from her neck to her feet on both the front and back sides. The couple said they were torturing the family because 
the mother was possessed by a demon. According to probable cause statement filed in a 30th Circuit Court in Benton County, deputies were called early Sunday morning to the Lincoln residence of the victim who stated there was a deceased girl upstairs in the home. The responding deputy discovered the little girl wrapped in a blanket, dead and severely bruised. All right. The vic- Hold yeah. on. So the mother's possessed, but yet you kill a four-year-old girl. This went on for two weeks. That's the yeah. other part that's oh. totally bizarre. This thing, and it's not even... It's the neighbors. Okay? Even if the it's mother's the- possessed, that does not... Let me speak up right now. Sorry. <laughs> it does not give you the right to kill somebody if even somebody's possessed. Well, it, it, this isn't even a priest or anything like that. This is just the neighbors to this family that... Uh, there's a lot of what the heck in this. And I mean, seriously. Look at his mugshot. He looks evil as f. Oh, totally. Oh, totally. He he, he he's like like he's Ted Bundy, but not so charming. Yeah, and they were torturing the entire family. Yeah, the entire family yep. for two weeks. Be- I- yeah, there's got to be money involved somewhere. That- we don't want to right. give away the story, but even if it's not said in the story, there's going to be some kind of financial. There, you would you would think. I or don't he's know. just a, he's just a uh, sadistic. Uh, there is something they, wrong with this whole story. They, There's a lot wrong with this whole yeah, story. There is. Okay, so here we go. The victim's father told the deputy that the alleged killer masked and his partner, Amon, had been beating his entire family for approximately two weeks. He had allegedly used a wooden spoon and a leather belt to inflict the beatings. The deputy found the man's wife and two sons in a nearby, nearby bedroom with the wife's face severely beaten and blackened and severe bruising all over her back and the two-year-old boy's legs blistered and bruised. The infant appeared uninjured. The victim's father told the deputy that Mastin Amon had come over about 8 a.m. and begun beating the two-year-old, which he said he and his wife were forced to watch. I just can't even. I I, I have no I, words. They show up at 8 o'clock in the morning and start beating this family. And it's been going on for two weeks. And I just, there's a lot. A lot of weird stuff going on. All right. We got to get through a little bit more before I start asking my (laughs) questions. Yeah. The man said he himself had been beaten with his wooden spoon for showing compassion for his wife and children. When the man was asked by the deputy how he could stand by and watch the beatings of his wife and children, he responded by saying he was told his wife had a demon inside of her and his children would end up the same way if the situation was not, quote, unquote, taken care of. Mast allegedly told him that if he told anyone or did not comply with the beatings, he would get the same or worse or even shot. He was told by Amon not to provide aid or comfort to his family or Satan would come. The man complied. He said the beatings were going on for some two weeks. It include forcing the girl's parents to perform sexual acts on her with a foreign object. Oh, my God. Like... Can we just stop right there and pretend I haven't read the article? Yep. And now that I said that, I have I have no words. Like, like two weeks. There's no like, words. Like, did they? I'm um, again. We're gonna. Did they leave and go back every morning at eight a.m.? Like, oh my god! Even if I- somebody is possessed, like. How could you let this go on for that long? Right. I don't even, I mean. I know he was scared, but two weeks you have a chance to call, hey, 911, guess what's going on? Or go over to the sheriff's department and say, or go to a priest. I mean, seriously, if you honestly think it's a demon, why are you not going to a priest? And But if it's a demon on, let's, let's pretend. 
let's pretend this all happened because she was possessed. What does that have to do with the children? What does that have to, like, no, this guy was just a sadistic MF. And I'm trying for once not to swear. You notice? Yeah. <laughs> You're trying. I'm trying. Yeah. It's not. We're not going to get to the story because I'm going to swear. Gonna, you're, well, yeah, because this article goes on. This is okay. horrific. The, the idea, the whole story is just horrific. The idea that they would use a demon possession to commit this yep. is just horrible. Uh, so here we go. On Saturday, Mast and Amon once again arrived at about 8 a.m., at which time Mast began beating the two-year-old with a wooden spoon. They left and returned about 5 p.m. and then began beating the girl with a leather belt as she begged her family for help, which was not forthcoming. She was then forced outside and made to get in a pond and stand in the water. Then the girl was held underwater by an unidentified adult, her father being forced to watch. Then Mast beat the little girl with his fist and the belt and continued beating the boy with a spoon. The girl, wet and beaten, was left on the bank to freeze. All right. So. What? I'm sorry. I, yes, I'm interrupting. Yeah. I have so many mixed feelings. I understand the guy was probably scared to death. But you were not forced to watch us. You had two weeks to speak up. It's not like they were there the entire time. The, the article even yes. states on that day. They left and came back. Yes. So, like, what, uh, how did they convince? How did they convince him? That's what I want to know. How did they convince him that's, that? That's the other thing we need to bring up. These articles don't always bring up every aspect of the story. They, they, they're, they're highlights of to make it popular. And hey, read me. Right, and obviously but, the. The mother has gone along with this too. I mean, we're placing a lot of blame on the dad, but the mother has gone no, along with no, this both, both situation that have gone along with this whole thing. Yes. Yeah. I just like I, the two adults perpetrating. I mean, it. The, it's just bizarre. I mean, let's be honest. If somebody was hurting your kid that way, wouldn't you die rather than let it continue? No yes, matter what. No way. No way. The minute they left after the first meeting, that would be it. Yeah. We would be... No. There's no. notes. No. So my happy mood has now gone out the window. Because... Yeah. yeah. Somebody needs to talk about this, though. Well, yeah. That... Very true. I mean... If you suspect that you're being possessed by a demon... <laughs> I mean, I think there would be other people that you could go and talk to besides these yahoos. Yeah, but again, even if one person is possessed by a demon, and I don't even believe that. I, let me make that I, clear. It no. has nothing to do with the children. Nothing. Nothing. No, they were just sadistic fucking, see, there we go. Um, sadistic fucking sick people. Yep. I think they're blaming the demon for this, but I think they're actually demons themselves, you know? Yeah. Mast and Amon were charged with second degree murder, three counts of first degree assault, and sexual abuse. All right. Why second degree murder? This was long and torturous, planned out. Oh. Yes. Should be first degree. This is just craziness. I mean, the whole thing. Um, like I said, this is a local one to me, and I'd seen it shared around quite a bit, and I didn't click on the article because I... Who until, wants to? Well, yeah, exactly. I mean, until... Uh, it had it, it been out for a few days, and I finally said, why are people sharing this one so much? And then I clicked on the article and read it, and I'm like... What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what am I? This is just so bizarre to me that number one, that it would go on for so long, that they would claim it was demon possession and just, I, I just flabbergast me. It to me, 
there's a few aspects that don't make sense. Number one, the demon. Again, they're saying the mother. They're afraid it will pass down, but if the mother is possessed and they kill her, at least that makes sense. Not to me, but in a fucked well, up mind. Right. Right. I mean, if, if the mother was drowned and all this stuff, yeah, that would possibly make a little more sense. Yeah, than that's what I mean. It's not good. The kid. But, but also, how about, how do I word this? Why is it, why is that four-year-old the only one that dies? I think they didn't mean to take it quite that far, but obviously. I'm sorry, you hold somebody down in water, you do mean to take it that far. Well, true. Very true. I just... Two weeks this goes on. I just don't understand. I just don't understand how it could go on that long without anybody being aware of it. I mean, where are the other neighbors? And, you know, school. And I mean, maybe they were learning remotely or something like that. But maybe, what about the dad's job and the mom's job? Let or- me tell you, though. If I was held captive for two weeks, even if it was off and on and I chose for some reason not to, nobody would notice. You don't think so, huh? No, no, no. They they wouldn't. They would just be like, she's being her and antisocial. But but you start abusing my kids and... uh, So I don't want to pass judgment on the parents yet because they're probably scared and... But still, I want to pass judgment on the parents. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, obviously, the parents weren't charged in this instance. So, yeah. I mean, that right there says a lot about, to me, about how involved they were in this, you know. And honestly, they probably honestly felt like they were being forced to do this. So, I mean, but still, it just is so mind boggling the whole idea of. The whole situation is just mind-boggling. It really is. And we would love to put ourselves in these people's position and say, my kids, my kids, my kids. But we don't know what they were dealing with. We don't know their mind frame. We don't know their intelligence. We don't know so much. True. And it's like, you know, those movies that start out in the middle and they're in this really jacked up situation you're like how did they possibly get there then they rewind the movie and they start over at the very beginning and you you find out how they get to that point but still it's i think that's what these articles are like you know we're reading the middle of the movie instead of seeing the beginning how it started but i just hope for my faith in humanity that it is something like that I'm just glad that they caught the people who did it and have obviously stopped them from doing this again. Yeah, but Um, if there's no, if, if the parents are totally with it and have intelligence and no, they should be held responsible. If, if people, I'm saying if there's a lot of backstory that we don't know. So, I'll hold my final opinion for that, but. Right. Yeah. I mean, like I said, the, obviously the parents were not charged. So hopefully. There must be a reason if they weren't charged. Yeah. Because they, it obviously said they participated. So, I mean, to me, there, there must've been some compelling reason that the police did not charge. Or parents. hopefully. I hope. I pray to God, please, let that be true. Or they will testify against these people. For sure. Yeah. I I would hope so, at the very least. So I'm like, I'm, I'm pissed, but trying to wait to see. Yeah. Yeah, I, I... To me, I want to know the beginning of the story. How did this happen? (laughs) How did they convince these parents to do this? That, that to me, is the biggest question. How did they convince these parents that this was needed? Because obviously the kid, somehow or another, convinced them. This is a sad story, but it needs to be told over and over and over again 
especially in the paranormal field, because yes, you can't just listen to anybody. Like somebody <laughs> comes in and says, in the name of the father, in the name of the son, you're possessed, and I'm going to kill your son. Like, no, no, no. Even mental health doesn't, like, you need to know better. Right. And, you know, when somebody claims that there are demons in your house and and they're going to do this ritual, if only you'll pay them, you know, I mean, I think. Oh, honestly, paying is something community. so different. Yes. In the paranormal community, we're, we're sometimes a little bit more open to thinking that there are demons or malevolent spirits or whatever. So it's important to know that don't take it this far, people. Get six, seven, eight different opinions because let me tell you, demons are rare. Very. Um, People needing exorcisms are so rare. It's, It's not even funny. You hear these hyped up stories and like, oh, that's me. That's me. Well, no, it's probably not. Right. And then, too, I think, you know, teens are contacted. I have a demon in my home. I need an exorcism performed on somebody in my family or, you know, stuff like that. And I think it's important to note that this particularly is an example of how that Most. goes wrong. Okay, so... Um, We recorded this episode yesterday, and there's already an update today, so we decided to add it on to this show, and um, it gives more detail, but we don't want to get rid of the first episode, so we're combining them. So we hope you guys enjoy the the updates. Yeah, a two-for-one episode. Yes, yes. (laughs) Okay, so this article was published yesterday on MSN.com, um, and so it's starting to pick up some national press. Um, the wait, article wait, is called, wait, you have to tell them what yesterday was. Oh, oh, shoot. Yesterday was December 29th. Yes. So, and this incident happened on December 22nd. Yep. So, this is kind of a... A new new story. Anyway, article is called "Parents Allegedly Let Neighbors Murder Their Daughter." A judge ensured they can't go to her funeral. Uh, the parents of a four-year-old Missouri girl cannot go to her funeral because they are being held without bond in context- connection to her death. Court records show that a judge denied a request from James Andrew Mass, 28, and Mary Shirk Mass, 29, to attend the ceremony. They are not charged with killing the child, but they are accused of standing by while the alleged murderers, Ethan Joel Mass, 35, apparently no relation, and Courtney Taylor Amon, 21, waged a fatal campaign of abuse against the family. Wouldn't that be According, conspiracy or something? Shouldn't it be? I would think so. Because I don't even think the story I, says what they're charged with, but that should be like assisted something or conspiracy or... Something. Something. And, and it does have the mug shots of the parents, and, and the, the wife definitely has a black eye. Yeah. So. Uh, according to partially redacted court documents obtained by law and crime, a deputy was attached to deep dispatch to a home on early Sunday morning to find that the four-year-old girl was dead, covered in bruises and some ruptured blisters. The investigation alleged allegedly uncovered a horrific campaign of abuse. Ethan Mass and Courtney Amon allegedly crossed the street across across the street to discipline the family. Apparently they live across the road. Yeah. <clears throat> this has been a huge God thing that they convinced us of, quote unquote, says Mary Mass in the documents. James Mass allegedly said that he was told that God was speaking through Amon, this is the neighbor across the road, who previously lived with them and his wife. Amon now lived with Ethan Mast and his wife. Benton County Sheriff Eric Knox told Law and Crime in a phone interview last week. As part of this alleged quote-unquote God thing, 
Mary Mass and a person whose name was redacted were said to be demonic. According to documents, James Mass pointed out that they had surveillance cameras set up inside of their home and that these recorded Ethan and Amon in the residence. The neighbors, however, would disconnect these after entering the residence, he said. A deputy noted that he was shown a video in which Amon motioned the plug for the camera, after which Ethan Mast walked to the camera and the image went blank. So Amon is the female accused. Amon is the female, yes. All right. I mean, (laughs) they've got security cameras in their home. And, yeah, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I just don't know. But... So, like, they're not crazy. They were smart enough to disable the cameras. Well, yeah, obviously. So they know what they're doing is wrong, which goes against legally insane. Yes, for sure. Um, Let's see. The article says both parents allegedly had trouble remembering their children's birthdays, which Mary Mass paraphrased as saying her mind was acting kind of funny. Uh, The child's parents admitted to initially enabling this abuse until their neighbors forced Mary Mast and the four-year-old into a freezing pond. The daughter initially survived the exposure to the water, but this allegedly caused her fatal condition. In this account, James Mast said that Amon and Ethan Mast made him put the child to bed naked and that he was not allowed to help her because it would make these neighbors mad. The neighbors left, and James Mast allegedly said he called law enforcement when he found his daughter dead on the floor. According to a document, the parents claimed that they, too, were beaten in the prior abuse, and deputies noted bruising on their bodies. Nonetheless, deputies are hardly treating them as blameless in all this. Authorities said the couple let the neighbors beat their family, including a four-year-old girl and a two-year-old boy. James Mast also allegedly said that the neighbors made his wife beat the son. The parents also accused of failing to seek help or provide aid on behalf of the daughter. All four defendants pleaded pleaded not guilty to their respective charges. So part of the reason why Shay and I wanted to read this one, too, was because um, the parents were charged. Exactly. And it gives gives a little bit more insight. Um, Yeah. I, I have a feeling these parents aren't mentally sound maybe mentally handicapped in some way or it, or something this article, this article makes it sound like that almost I, but we thought that and yesterday then, when we um recorded the original like something had to be wrong like yeah and then the fact that um the woman the almond lady was living with them before kind of gives a little bit more insight into it too you know that's how they know them so well, but I just, I don't know. I I don't know. Oh, God. Like like we said yesterday, this is just a story that needs to be told. Just, just, so if one person learns, like, something, this is so sad. And they don't explain, and they probably will later on, they don't explain broken blisters. Like, the little yeah, girl had... Know broken like that goes above and beyond beatings yeah yeah what did they do to create the blisters oh i probably don't even want to know i probably don't even, my stomach's turning yeah i probably don't even want to know either let's see ethan mass and courtney amen face charge those are the neighbors face charges including murder in the second degree and assault in the first degree mary mass is charged with domestic assault this is mom in the first degree and endangering the welfare of a child James Mass, the father, is charged with endangering the welfare of a child, serious physical injury, and endangering the welfare of a child, death of a child. Each oh, see, I didn't read that part. Days. I missed that, so I didn't even know why they yeah. were char- what they were charged with. Oh, okay. Yeah, child endangerment, basically. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, on one hand, I'm glad the parents were charged with something because you know, I, you have to stand up for your kids. That's just yeah, you should absolutely, no matter the cost. Right. I just yeah, this whole story is just mind-boggling. Makes me sad and sick at the same time. Yeah, exactly. It's just 
it's just sad. And then to, to think that they're blaming this on God or a demon or something like that, too, is just wrong. Yeah. No, it's just an evil person. Right? Exactly. And I don't mean evil as in, like, possessed. I just mean a disgusting human being or human beings. Right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it is. It's so sad. Yeah, it is. It is. And I think I think we'll probably have more updates on this one just because um, since it just so recently happened, we'll probably hear more about it. Oh, yeah, especially since whatever that document was was uh, partially redacted. So even the information they already have, they're not releasing. Right. Yeah. Like, when did when did the neighbor live with them, and what happened when they lived with them? You know, was it the guy that influenced the woman? Are they all just fucking nuts? Like, because... Well, yes. Not, <laughs> I would say yes. Yeah, but... but uh, just, I, 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 again, not legally insane, because they all knew right from wrong. Well... Yes. We don't know about the parents yet, but the other two definitely knew right from wrong. Um, and For I'm sure. assuming the parents probably did too, but I shouldn't assume. Well, you know what they yeah. say. Well, true, but, mm -hmm. <laughs> but. Yeah. I mean, like, I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop. Like, obviously they're not legally mentally retarded or anything like that because they were charged do you know what i mean yes like if, if yeah they, i know what you're saying yeah. they, they're not claiming insanity yeah. at this and, point, anyway. and i mean nothing by that i meant that legitly i have an uncle who is mentally retarded so there's no um i don't mean that in a bad way i just mean they're charged so there's got to be something behind it. Right. Right. They have, they, well, obviously they did something wrong. Um, yeah. And yeah, it's not, they, it's not like they're thinking they're going to plead insanity or, you know, something like that or mental capacity. Diminished. Or, you know, what is it? Diminished. Yeah. It's, yeah. Something. Diminished capacity. There That's we go. Yeah. I don't know. So I guess we will bring you updates as they come because there's no happy ending. Yeah, I think we're going to see. That, no, this is definitely not a happy ending, happy story. But um, I think we will, we'll see more about this later. Yeah. And even if all four people go to jail for the rest of their lives, there's still no happy ending because that little innocent girl is still deceased and was tortured. So well, this, yeah, and, and and then you have the siblings whose parents are now incarcerated. Yeah, yeah. you know, and probably, obviously, we'll have limited contact with them for the rest well, of us. Hopefully, so. none. Uh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. No. Well, so yeah, it's very sad. It is. For sure, a sad story. But again, one what we thought we wanted to discuss because of the whole um, the ramifications for paranormal investigators. Exactly. Um, like, like we talked about yesterday with the, uh, you know, um, thinking that there's demons at every location and stuff like that. So this is the worst case scenario of that situation. Right, exactly. And I think it also puts into perspective of not only investigators, but how about the clients that are claiming demonic possession or demons, and how does that fall into line with us investigating? Where, where's that responsibility end? Like, we go walk in there and we're like, they're fucking nuts, we're never going back. Right, but you know, then they keep searching because they, we, you know, the 
one team doesn't resolve their problem and tells them they're crazy, then they're going to keep looking and right. find That's what I mean. something like that. So where's the responsibility lie? Right. So, which is why a lot of teams, not all, but a lot more teams than I thought have um, contracts. Oh, yes. Yeah. So. I don't know. I just know the little girl and the siblings are in my prayers. Uh, yeah, mine too. Mine too. It's just, the whole, you know, the extended family. I mean, they have to be just heartbroken. Oh, yeah. You know? uh, uh, grandmothers and sisters and cousins and, like, why do we see this? Why didn't we know? You know, yeah. you can beat yourself up over stuff like that. For sure. Yeah. But the siblings lost their little sister, lost both their parents, and someday we'll have to come to terms with it all happened most likely. We don't know for sure yet, but most likely it all could have been stopped by their parents. Yeah, I would think it could have been. Yeah. I just don't like to assume too much, but at this point, a little girl's dead, so you get mad and, you know. Right. Well, it's one of those things that's easier to look back on and say, well, they could have done this. Exactly. Or they could have done that. Um, it's a lot easier for us to say that than, right. you know. But uh, uh, being into law stuff, um, again, they're innocent until proven guilty. Um Legally, maybe, maybe not morally, but legally, they are innocent until proven guilty. We don't know anything else about them because the defense, obviously, is not going to put out their strategy ahead of time. So who knows? We could see how they have such low IQs or they could have mental illness beyond um, anything that's manageable. I don't know. I'm, I, I hope it's something like that. I know that sounds horrible, too, but I'm hoping it's not just two parents that just didn't care. Yeah. I Yeah. I hope so. For, yeah. for the other kids' sake, you know, just. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, it's a really sad story and one that just, um, this definitely makes you think about. It does. Yeah. I think um, this is where that saying, you see something, say something. Like, even if you're wrong, or, at least or, you tried. Yeah. No, I agree. 100%. You know, even if you are wrong, at least, you know. What if you weren't wrong you and you didn't? Up. You didn't report. Yeah. Could exactly. You, could you live with yourself? Because I couldn't. No. No. All right, guys. On that note, we are going to leave it there, and we will bring you updates as we need it. Rebecca, if anybody has questions or comments, where can they send them? Exploring the Unknown podcast uh, group on Facebook. And uh, Shay will post the articles over there, and we definitely appreciate some discussion on this. I mean, besides the what the part of this, these articles, you know, just what are your thoughts? Yes, because um, this is, I think it's a subject that needs to be talked about more, from, brought to the forefront so more people recognize signs. Yes, for sure, for sure. And, um, yeah, if there, if you stumble across an article from your hometown um, that you think we'd like to talk about, um, just share it in the podcast group and we'll give you a special shout out or ask you to come on as a guest. All right, guys, we hope you had a safe New Year's Eve and a happy New Year's Day. And hopefully 2021 is better than 2020. Well, let's hope. Right? Amen. From your Amen. mouth to God's ears. For sure. Happy New Year, guys. <laughs>